All right, I hit record on this. What? You hit record? Yeah, hit record. Is We're it? recording. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. I'm doing triple checking. Woo! All Let's right. Let's go. So, today on Seeking Wisdom, uh, are you drinking a LaCroix? La How you say it? I don't know, but they still haven't sent me a case of seltzer. Unbelievable. Slipping. The amount of that stuff that we consume here. Uh, so today on Seeking Wisdom, we're going to talk about three lessons from one of our all-time favorite books. All-time favorite books. What? Uh, Behind the Cloud. It's called Behind Woo! the Cloud. I didn't the know this. The untold story of how Salesforce.com That's why you were went reading. from idea to billion-dollar company and revolutionized an industry. That's a title. Yes. That is a title. That's a you said that's title. why you said that's why I was what? Uh, that's why you were rereading it. You Re-reading. posted something that you were rereading this book. Yes. Okay. I, now I get it. So a couple things. I you know this podcast has been amazing, but there's a whole other level that we need to unlock. Mm. And so I realize it's my duty as the you know host of this show. As all things, you're the talent. I'm yeah, the yeah. host. Um, Who runs the show? I don't know what we're doing. I could do a better job really going deep and prepping. And if we do a good job prepping, we can turn it into a blog post and a video and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, we've so, been going like this levels, and now we've been like this. Yeah, I know. It's Plateauing, flat. And we need to go flat. up another we level. We need to go up another level. So the growth has been a little flat. So I don't know what you're doing out there. It yeah. actually hasn't been. It has you know, been. It has been. We just – we flat here, if you live in D.C.'s – let me tell you something. If you live in D.C.'s world, flat, double-digit growth is flat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's all you Amen. need to know. All right. So – there's so much gold in this book, but mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure that we stick to one of our favorite principles, which is the rule of threes. Okay. So when we get back, you hit me up the other day, and you're like, we got to get back to doing book reviews. Yep. We got to get more guests on the podcast. Uh-huh. I They're said, coming. They're coming. I said, totally, we have some heat for you. Yep. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. Two weeks from now. Easy, easy. Two weeks from now, mm-hmm. this man mm-hmm. started a company that you have heard of yep. called Kayak.com. Yep. Uh, his name is Paul English. You and, you and him go way back. Way back. Right? In the day. And he's going to come hang out and get on the podcast. Oh, yeah. We're gonna, that's going to be entertaining. If you don't know Paul, it's going to be fireworks. It's going to be a little fireworks show. So anyway, we're going to talk about three lessons uh, from this book in the meantime. And, and there's three things. So there's a million lessons. This is one of our favorite books. Go check it out. We might even give some away after this. We should give some away okay. for people who hit us up on Instagram stories. It has to be Instagram stories. That's it. Hey, Drift. Yep, that's okay. it. <laughs> that's it. I love that's it. it. Done. Instagram stories. It's where it's at. Um, and so, so there's three things I pulled out from this book that I want to dissect with you in particular. If I had another person, maybe I'd ask them something different. Uh-huh. But there's three things that I want to pull out. Number one, we're going to talk about why a brand is your company's most important asset. Number two, we're going to talk about why marketing is everybody's job. Mm-hmm. And number three, we're going to talk about why you have to keep your standards high as your company grows. Mm-hmm. All right. So you know Salesforce, right? Everybody, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know Salesforce. Um, but if you haven't, this book will be required reading. And the easiest way to get it is we'll, we'll let you know. So um, number one, number one lesson out of this book, why a brand is your company's most important asset. Before I even go into my notes, how, how would you answer that? Why is a brand? I was just looking out for one of my tweets here. Where you, oh. oh, yeah. Okay. That, got, that what had you got? 84 likes on it, 29 re- 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 tweets. Off. Not showing off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just love it. Uh, that's just a standard, standard okay. level. Okay. Right there. Did Mark Andreessen like that? No, no. He's he back. Did, he he's hasn't back. retweeted any of your stuff yet. P. Mark, uh, how are you? What did your tweet say? So my tweet said, product based differentiation is going away. Mm. Act accordingly. Mm. Right? And so that one got a bunch of likes and retweets. And, uh, and that's at the foundation of what you're talking about yes. right here with brand mm-hmm. and what Benioff has done so well for so long, which is to try to br- build this brand halo around the company that goes beyond the product, mm-hmm. right? Beyond a CRM, which is what they started with. Totally. And, and, and the reason like this is, uh, so in the book, they were mm-hmm. competing against a company called Siebel yep. at the time, right? And on, on paper, they made the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. They both made the CRM. Yep. One was on-prem, yeah. one was in the cloud. Did you ever have to use Siebel? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to eat? <laughs> no, Did I'm you? just trying to say, What's like, going on here? I'm trying to show that you're OG. DHD and, uh, and Amy are in here. Yeah, Come they, on, no? That's okay. It's okay. So the point is, like, the whole point about the product-based um, differentiation is, like, uh-huh. if you just try to compete on features today, yeah. you're toast. 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 Yeah. And so the number one thing that Salesforce did was they started this movement, right? Mm-hmm. This is how you fight against against the battle. Yep. And so they were phenomenal about building this brand halo around the company. And so we think about brand so much and we write about the reason to invest in brand because we think more so than when sales, Salesforce started, 
now they were starting and they were fi- uh, in starting in the software category with being on in the cloud versus right. being on prem. Right? They had they fought it and they were the first company in this new category. New category. And so they had this early adopter advantage on the cloud. Now we're all building SaaS companies including Drift at a time where there are hundreds if not thousands of competitors in any given category. Mm. And in that world, we need to move beyond the idea of product-based differentiation, which worked for that first wave, which was Salesforce, and maybe even a little bit with the second wave. And now in this third wave, we need to move hard into the brand differentiation story. And like, why do people mm. want to, why do they care about your company? And and you you replied to somebody in that tweet, I remember seeing it, and it was like, somebody was like, what do you mean by act accordingly? Mm-hmm. And you said something about like uh, P&G or Tide. And, yeah, P&G and, P&G and Tide. We're selling coffee or laundry detergent now and so like you got to brand accordingly and so you have to invest in things that most software companies don't want to invest in which are which are like uh you know your brand from mm-hmm. a marketing standpoint from a messaging and voice standpoint your customer experience from everything from you know how, how your product works so user experience and design is not just a design thing right it's everything about like how you interact with something and i was th- i was going to make up i was in the midst of making up a slide okay DG doesn't believe me. I do. Uh, you okay. sent me. You've been sending me a lot okay. lately. It must and, mean I'm slipping, but yeah. And in it, I was going to show like a visual that that hammers home this case here, and it showed like okay, first wave of software. This is what this was w- when product based differentiation mattered, and it showed a picture of the homebrew computing club, and it showed Steve Wozniak and St- and and uh, Steve Jobs, yep. and then it showed uh, Bill Gates, yep. you know, back in the old days when he's laying on the table yep. in front of that old PC. Mm-hmm. And those are when those guys ruled. And then you look at all the way you fast forward today and what is today's products and companies look like. They look like Airbnb. They look like Whole Foods. They look like Nike. They look like a totally different animal, yeah. even those companies in the software category. And the crazy part is, like, and this is what I think a lot of people don't understand, even if you do make the best product or make the best feature, yeah. we as consumers have just been like conditioned to be so skeptical yep. because advertising and marketing was just like, this is the best, this is the best. Nobody believes it. Yep. So you can't just compete on saying like, no, but our thing is faster. Exactly, because we've gone through the second wave, which is to build the factory part. So now because we know how to build the factories and we're efficient at building factories, right. that means we can copy anything, right? So back then, when Wozniak or Jobs were building things, it was almost impossible for anyone to catch up and copy them fast enough, right? Because uh, it was so hard to develop that. And now you fast forward, whatever you build, someone somewhere in the world can copy that feature or product or physical thing overnight. Right. And that's why you talk about, you've said on this podcast a bunch, and just even like internally to our team at Drift that you have to have a brand that's an emotional moat. You have to mm-hmm. have that connection. So the thing that Salesforce did, which is, I think, you know, one of our favorite things of yeah. all time is they built, they created something bigger than the uh, bigger than the software, yep. and that was this whole movement mm-hmm. around no software. Yep. They created this whole campaign around the end of software. Um, I wonder if he got that from our... No more forms. From, from no more forms. That's where he got you that idea. That? You yeah. think he traveled into the future, I think saw he no did. more forms, and went back. He's like, one got day it. there's going to be a bald brown guy, and he's going to make a logo no that is no forms. I think like, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a good idea. So the so uh, the story in the book, which you should go check out, is like they took it. Benioff took it to his brand guy. And they came back with this no software logo. Mm-hmm. And the best part was actually not even the logo. It inspired like the number to call Salesforce. If you were a Salesforce yep. customer, you'd have to dial 1-800-NO-SOFTWARE. That's a G. And that just cemented that everything. And what it did is something you're obsessed with right now is this brand archetypes. Mm-hmm. Um, it gave people like a cause to rally around. They yep. rallied around this mission of like the old way of doing things is broken. Mm-hmm. It's too expensive. Mm-hmm. It's a pain in the ass. So we are the hero. Mm-hmm. The old way of doing it is the villain. Totally. And so I think in brand archetypes, uh, they were clearly the hero, right? And, uh, and I think they did an amazing job of that. I don't know if the Salesforce of today holds up to what they did in the old days, no. but it's an interesting case study to look at them in those yeah. early days. And this, so anyway, this, back in the day, this campaign was so diabolical is the right word. Mm-hmm. They had an ad that was a fighter jet and yeah. like a little prop plane. The yeah. fighter jet was Salesforce and the little prop plane was Siebel. Ooh. It was an ad it, and it said, it said the end of software, right? Yeah. It was an ad that you had to pay for. Yeah. But one of the local papers thought it was such a genius marketing campaign yeah. that they printed it like in the front page of the business section. Amazing. Didn't have to pay for that. Amazing. That's what you get. 
DG went a weekend. It's why people were so. A lot of people were mad about the dear, you know, Slack's dear Microsoft yep. letter. But at the end of the day, look about look look where that was, right? Mm-hmm. Look where that got them. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that's number one. That's that's you know. I should have published my dear HubSpot letter. Oh, you should. Well, now you know yeah, it might, might, might be one day. One day we might have to. Um, number two. So number one is all about brand. Number two is why marketing is everybody's job. Mm-hmm. This you might as well have written this one. You sure I didn't write that? Uh, you I may. think he did come into the future. Benioff. Yeah, I right. got these. Talk about this one. Yeah, marketing being everyone's job, mm. and so it's just like customer experience is everyone's job. Yeah, I don't think those things are departments. I think everyone has to feel like they're carrying the brand forward because every interaction, just like the customer experience in terms of marketing, every interaction that someone has with someone from your company is a marketing opportunity, right? And so it's everything about like the shirts you have, the the way you talk about the product, how you can describe it, and something that Mark did, which I don't know if you'll talk about there, is that he had little business card. You have that? Yeah, because uh, I knew you want, okay. I knew this was right up your alley. I love it. So, so yeah, so the, 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 the Benioff thing was uh, they created a laminated card, yeah. a marketing cheat sheet for everyone in the company. We, need those. we do need those. That's yeah. why I wrote it down because I was like, and that's why I started rereading this book. I was like, man, two years later was the first time I read this. There's so many things we can pull out today. Um, but his whole thing was like, everyone needs to be on the same page. Yep. Because in order to really build a world-class company, to mm-hmm. sell, to hire, uh, you know, to build, everyone had to know the why. Yep. And so what he did is they, they had their marketing, communications, and PR team like mm-hmm. make a laminated card, very simple, and they put it on every single person's desk. Yep. And they also had for specifically customer-facing employees, mm-hmm. so uh, customer success, support, and sales, yep. They had them all go through like a certification. And so you had to be on, certified huh? on how to pitch the business. Mm-hmm. Like that was part of the new hire training. And he said like not only did that, you know, make them more effective uh, at communicating, but they also were more confident about like, oh, well, how are you different than this company? Like ah, we just drift certification. It's man. a great, it's a great cool. idea. But me saying yes. But the, you know, the laminated, mm-hmm. the laminated card, but back, I just think it goes back to the whole, like, the experience is everything from how a candidate, like, comes up the elevator and comes I'm into drift. And, details. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I think recruiting is a marketing totally. thing. So, like, how do people, exactly what you're saying, how do people enter the office? What well, does the office look like? Well, Who you've, do they interact you've told, with? You, one of the things you've told us internally is, like, you know, before interviews and after interviews, you're like, look, even if we don't make an offer to this person, yep. we need to have that person leaving this office, like, damn. That company's awesome. I had a great experience. Exactly. And hopefully, and maybe one day I'll work there. Or by drift. Or by drift. Yeah. Perfect. But that's why you feel that way. Yeah. And so they can go off and tell people about this amazing experience that they had. And what's great about that is that it's, uh, most people don't care about those details. So it's easy to stand out if you can do those things. It's hard to do it every day, just like any other service. Like yeah. If you work in a restaurant, it's hard to have good service every day. But if you can do it, then it becomes legendary. Well, you hit on something that's really important. And I think we take for granted a lot the details. Yep. Because, like, I remember a couple months ago, you go to a lot of conferences, speak at a lot of things, and usually the experience is kind of shitty. Mm-hmm. You, came back from, you came back from one, and you, like, you, you brought me the speaker list. You brought me the badge. You brought me the list of everything because you're like, write this shit down. Yeah. This is the playbook. They, mm-hmm. The experience was unbelievable. And it's yeah. just like uh, that's a little example of, like, when you nail the experience, oh, yeah. what happens after. Uh, it's worth talking about, right? And, it's, and we can still remember that story. Yeah. All right, so that's number two. Number three, the last one is keep your standards high as you grow. Mm, I know I don't, this is, I don't know anything about this. You know, <laughs> this is at the top of your list right now, right? Yeah. The company's grown a lot over the last year. Mm-hmm. What, what, what keep what what part of this like speaks to you? Keeping your standards high as we grow, oh, other than goodness. the whole thing, the whole thing, everything about it. Um, I'd say this is the one that I that I'm most obsessed, most obsessed and painful to be around. Because of uh, because I want to. Yeah. Amy's Amy's trying not to nod her head, but I, what's the, I see her eyes. What is her the pain, eyes what's nodding. the what's the painful yeah. part? Like yeah. what is painful? Uh, it's hard to get critical feedback all the time. So if you're creating something, it's hard to always for someone to to make you feel like that it's never good enough. Mm. So that's painful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm always pushing us to raise our standards to be better. Mm. And that's hard. It sounds good. And the outcome is good, but to deal with it every day, it's hard. Mm. I had a call with Elias this morning, his co-founder here, and he likes to say that I'm a robot, <laughs> that, I <don't, laughs> that I'm emotionless, and that he has to like he has to be the emotions yeah. for for drift. And what did you no what emotion. did you say to that? I said that's true. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's why you guys are a good couple. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely true. Because I'm constantly like more, better, you know, keep more. Yeah, more, yeah, better. Yeah. yeah, like a DG is like, yeah, yeah, yeah more, yeah, better. Yeah. Um, keeping those standards high, right? right. I, we have a new person. Well, we have a whole bunch of new people coming in the team. And I was communicating with him this weekend. And I was saying probably the hardest part about you coming here is the relentlessness that I bring around standards because I don't think I think you've done amazing things in the past mm. but probably haven't been pushed this hard this often and uh, and that's basically how I am and how we are as a company because we have this audacious mission that we're trying to accomplish and, uh, and it's going to take that level of of detail and yeah, it all goes back to details, right? Mm-hmm. And so the sum, all those parts. So, so these were there's four. There's really four values that that Salesforce in this book they looked for with all new each new hires. That kind of speaks to each one of these things. Uh, they look for um, they look for people who had massive accomplishment and energy. Mm-hmm. They look for employees who have an entrepreneurial drive. They look for people who are scrappy. Yep. And they look for people who have something to prove. Mm. And on we the have s- almost all those. We ha- yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's very similar to our hiring checklist. Yeah. Uh, and on the something to prove point, he said like there was an early offsite where they had a lot of all the execs there. Um, and they went around the room and they had people raise their hand for raise your hand if you were a, a uh, first generation um, college graduate in your mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. And it was a, over a third of the people in the room, which is a lot, yeah. raised their hand and said that. Mm-hmm. And he said like, that's important because those are all people who felt like they had something to prove. Mm. And he wanted to have that mix in the company as they continued to grow. Putting that in the notebook. And we talked about that a lot. You look yeah. for like, all right, what's a shit, like tell me about a shitty job. Yep. Or, yeah, which is a requirement now. We didn't have this requirement before, but Keith who runs recruiting for us, I have this requirement now that anyone that he brings in going forward has to have had at least one shitty job. I love that. Right? We're gonna we because gotta do gotta a, we do context. episode on that. Okay. That's a whole topic. All right, so 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 that's a wrap. I'm gonna wrap this up. Did I did I miss anything from this book that you want to mm. let the people know about? That you need to hit us up on Hey Drift on Instagram oh, that's right. for your free copy that's of this right. book if you haven't read it. I've read this at least three times. Yeah, I think maybe four or five times. At this we point. talk about business books a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, this to me is the one that's worth re- rereading. Yep. you know, almost every year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So reread it while you're leaving a six star review. You so could you do look, both. You could do both. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard for some people to understand. But look, you could be typing like yes. this, leaving a six star review uh-huh. while reading mm-hmm. the book or mm-hmm. listening to the book. There's an audio version of this book if you want to listen to it. Mm. Leave a six star review. Shout out Amy. Shout out DHD. Give Dave a little bit of love this no, week. I don't want it. Okay, he doesn't want it. That's good. All I want you to here here's here's the real. This is I'm going to be real with you for a second. We talked a lot about Uh-oh. our conference hypergrowth. Yeah, get real. It's getting real. Yeah, like we're, this house is going to be packed, and I'm not just saying like if you're on this podcast and you're like you know. I think I should go to hypergrowth. I'm not sure. Like, you better get your ticket because those things are going. Let's go. And they're going fast. Mm-hmm. The house is going to be packed. We might be running a flash, uh, a little flash special this week yeah. if you Seeking stick with wisdom us. Seeking wisdom promo code. That's all you got to okay. do. If you come and you're from the show, you get to hang out with DG. Yeah. I'll say hi. DC will be there. I'll be there. Actually, we're thinking about doing Seeking Wisdom Live. So What? Yeah. So you might have to be there. Will you I have to have, have to notes? Well, ha- uh, you will not have to have notes. Woo-hoo! Do you ever have notes? Your phone is even not even facing up. No, no, it's facing down. All right. Got to face it down and show that. Look at that drift sticker That's right there. Hot. Boom. It's pretty hot. All Let's right. Let's go. Six stars only. Six stars only. Seeking Wisdom promo code. Hit us up on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Don't forget about us. September 25th, be here. You're going to get to party. DHD, you're going to be at our conference? Yeah, she is. Uh, DHD is going to be back in the conference. Amy's going to be running around with a headset that day. Headset, yeah, yeah, yeah. clipboard, all that. I need somebody to the green room right now. Okay. (laughs) If you want to meet these people, which are Amy and DHD, far more interesting than myself or DJ. Far more interesting. Please come and hang out. Please hang out. Very more fun. See ya.